Karen Cushman. Karen Cushman was born on October 4, 1941 in Chicago, Illinois. Chicago wasn't just Chicago to her. Chicago was home. Where she loved the snow and summer lightning storms. But most importantly, her grandparents lived there. As a child, she learned about the public library very early. She would go alphabetically down the shelves and try to read every single book. Books were always a big part of her life. No book was a challenge for Karen. As she grew up, she became very creative. She would pretend to travel around the world as she rode around on her brother's scooter. When she got a little older, she would get wild passions about a certain subject and read all there was about the topic. At one point, she was determined to teach ballet to her friends, so they would stand next to a car as Karen read to them what they had to do. Karen loved books and would read anything she could get her hands on. From Little Lulu comic books, Homer Price and the Donut Machine, Mad Magazine, and even Seventeen Magazine. She wrote enthusiastically poems, plays, short stories, and even a novel. She didn't know anyone else who wrote, and certainly no adult who wrote for a living, so she never thought about being a writer. She just wrote. For a real job, she wanted to be a movie star, or a ballet dancer, or a brain surgeon, depending on what book she had just finished reading. When Karen was 10, she moved to Los Angeles where she lost all her fairy things in the world. It was too hot as she was away from her grandparents. In 1959, she went to college at Stanford University. What a change from Los Angeles. She received her master's in human behavior and museum studies. On September 6, 1969, Philip and Karen buried in the backyard of her parents' home in Orange, California. A rabbi recited the words to the Beatles in my life. Philip wore a brightly colored velvet vest that she made especially for him. On March 27, both Philip and Karen welcomed their daughter Leah Karina Cushman to the world. Leah is a lovely, sweet, intelligent woman. She shares the same passion as her mother and has dedicated her life to being a librarian. Many years after learning to dance from a book, she started writing her own. One of her favorite parts about writing is that she can sit around in her room reading children's books and call it research. She started to write in 1990 and is still writing. She was also a professor at the John F. Kennedy University in the Museum Studies Department. This connection helped her with her first two books. She got information about life and different people and places. Karen Cushman's writing was influenced by several people. One day she had a really good idea as she wanted to tell her husband. He would not listen and told her to write it down and then showed it to him. And so she did. This turned out to be her first book, Catherine Called Birdie. Karen began her first book at 50 years old, proving it is never too late to start writing. Catherine Called Birdie was Cushman's first foray into publishing in 1994. Catherine is a 13-year-old daughter of a minor nobleman. She lives in a manor house and spends her life doing endless mindless embroidery and keeping a journal at the request of her brother. Her father's position has afforded Catherine a life of relative luxury which her journal entries show she resents. 
wishing instead to be free to do as she pleases, rather than waiting to be married off to her father's gain. The entire book takes the form of Catherine's journal. In 1995, Catherine called Bertie received the Newbery Honor Award, as well as the American Library Association's Best Book List and the Notable Children's Books. Karen's interest in the Middle Ages also helped her. Knowing something of the period helped her to learn more. The second book that she wrote was The Midwife's Apprentice. Karen Cushman has another spellbinding novel set in medieval England known as The Midwife's Apprentice. The girl known only as Brad has no family, no home, and no future until she meets Jane, the midwife, and becomes her apprentice. As she helps the sharp-tempered Jane deliver babies, Brad, who renames herself Alice, gains knowledge, confidence, and the courage to want something from life. A full belly, a content heart, and a place in this world. Medieval village life makes a lively backdrop for the funny, heartfelt story of how Alice gets what she wants. In 1996, The Midwife's Apprentice won the Newbery Award, as well as the American Library Association's Best Book List and the Best Books for Young Adults. The love and passion that Karen has for writing hasn't ended there. Over the past 10 years of her life, she has continued to write. In 1998, she wrote The Ballad of Lucy Whipple. In 2000, she wrote The Matilda Bone. In 2004, she wrote Rod Zinna. And the latest book, in 2006, she wrote The Loud Silence of Francine Green. Karen's books have been such an important part in young readers that her books have been translated into 11 different languages. Karen Cushman is a very important author to young adult literature. She is one who dares to go beyond the limits of previous authors. She explores things that have not yet been written about, or the other side or sides of an idea or event, not the common. Her most significant contribution is just that. She is not afraid to research a topic that is not easy to research. Karen Cushman writes very moving and emotional stories, but they are always a good representation of the historical aspect of the time period. Her stories explain the problems of daily life among the common people at different times in history. That is why Karen Cushman is the excellent author that she is today.